Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter two talking about mobile application test types and continuing ahead with the 2.1 testing for compatibility with device hardware. And this is the part three of the same. In order to continue further, we are talking about testing for typical interrupts, which basically goes with understanding that there are so many interrupts which can be popped up with respect to a particular application. And there are so many inbuilt applications and many other apps which can pop up on the screen and specific to device as well, which can definitely be a obstruction to the app usage. So generally when your battery goes down, you get a pop-up on the screen saying that do you want to turn on the saver mode or you have 20% remaining, 10% remaining and all sort of these interrupts. But there are many more things. So common types of device interrupts include a voice call while you're using the app, suddenly calls you, somebody calls you and you do have messages, charger switched on, low memory and other notifications. But what does it have to do with the app interaction? It sometimes can hold your data or maybe kill your session as well, right? So user initiated interrupts results from actions such as app switching or setting the device into standby while the app is running. Now test for interrupts, checking the following should be conducted. The app handles the all of the interrupts mentioned above correctly without negative impact on the app behavior. The app continues to function correctly preserving its states, data, and session regardless of which interrupt occurs. Where the device has a blocking do not disturb mode, which suppresses the notifications, the app must ensure that the very conditions are used correctly. These tests must also be performed when the do not disturb mode is turned off after having been active for a long period of time. This results in many notifications being received at once. Also, the test should be designed for receiving interrupts during the app usage to make sure that the interrupts do not have a negative impact. For example, answering a phone call while using the app and the user being returned to the state where he was at the time of the interrupt. So it should not basically give you any kind of loss of data or loss of the session, but just gives you a quick return back saying that, okay, when you come back from the interrupt, you continue there. So a lot of devices today support this interface where they give you the simultaneous sessions as you just jump into the notification and you come back, you continue and resume there. And that's how you can work on parallel applications at the same time on a lot of devices these days by splitting your screen in two. The second part of it is testing for access permission to device features. When generally an app is installed, you are being prompted to allow so many things to be accessed. The same thing we are talking about here, that does it really have permissions to access the right things or not? And that's if permission is allowed, how does your app react? And what if the permission is not allowed or denied, what happens to your app? So app need access to various folders such as contacts, pictures, and to the sensors such as camera and microphone. When access is denied at installation or changed after installation, it may, it may impact the app behavior. Now tests should be also organized and conducted to check the following permissions. The app is able to work with reduced permission. It asks the user to grant these permission and does not fail in an unexplained manner. So it should always have information on the screen stating that if you don't allow camera, you cannot take a picture using this app. Or if you don't allow camera to be enabled, you cannot make a video conferencing using this app. Similarly, when you don't allow pictures or gallery access, it does not allow you to upload a picture. You can only take a picture using the camera, but you cannot upload from your directory. So an uh, information message on the screen should be uh, given to the user that what happens if you deny all these access. Permissions are only requested for the resources which are relevant to the app's functionality. That's really important. If you really ask for unwanted apps access, then it people may just turn off your uh, application or probably uninstall it. No broad permissions for unrelated, unrelated resources are allowed. The app functionality responds correctly if the permission is withdrawn or rejected during the installation. 
any request for permissions issued by the app is correct and justifiable to the user so that people feel more trustworthy using your applications and meet the guidelines of several other protocols. Now to test for access permission, a tester needs to know why the app needs each permission and how functionality should be impacted if the permission is withdrawn or rejected during the installation or even after the installation. This test should be designed for rejecting permissions during installation as well as granting permissions after installation. So to and fro. During installation, check if somebody accepts or denies it. Then after installation, somebody turns it on or turns it off. Both the cases should be tested at both the points in order to make sure that how the app actually behaves if these conditions are met or fulfilled. Finally, adding up more from the power consumptions and the state of the device will also impact your app usage. So test for power consumption and state should also check the following including the battery power state and drainage related defects, data integrity under low power and dead battery conditions, power consumptions while the app is active and is under heavy and low use, power consumptions while the app is in background. Why? Because we want to give you a convenience of using the app like this app should not be consuming a lot of power and when it is turned off, the data is retained on the device with the app being placed there. So when you turn on after maybe one or two days, you still find all the information stored within the app, which could be like related to banking application or maybe a game, uh, the game which you are playing, then if your mobile is turned off for a reason, at least you start right there where you stopped. So at least like the current ongoing event will be lost, but not the progress will be lost. So these tests need to be planned carefully as these need to be run uninterrupted over an extended period of time. For example, the device may need to be left unattended with the app in the background or foreground, but the device is not used. Tools such as long log analyzer are needed to extract information about battery drain patterns. Again, this could not be done manually. Of course, you need a log analyzer to capture all the information about it, and that should meet your expectations and desire to understand if the application is really capturing all the information or not. So. That was all to talk about the 2.1. I hope you had a good clarity on this. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.